Imagine standing under the starry night sky looking up at the vast cosmos. Have you ever wondered where life came from? Beyond the confines of our blue planet, the universe sprawls out in an inconceivable expanse, a tapestry of galaxies, stars and planets shrouded in enigma. Each twinkling star, a potential sun, nurturing life on distant planets. The question of life's origin is one of the grandest mysteries of our existence. Some believe it all started here on Earth, while others speculate a cosmic origin. A myriad of theories exist, each weaving fascinating tales of life's advent. From the primordial soup theory that suggests life originated from a mix of simple organic compounds, to the cosmic seeding theory that proposes life was brought to Earth by comets or meteorites. But none of these theories evoke as much intrigue as the concept of life originating beyond the confines of our solar system. One such theory that sparks imagination and curiosity is the theory of directed panspermia. Directed panspermia, a theory as fascinating as its name, posits an intriguing possibility about life's origin. Let's first break down the term. Panspermia, deriving from Greek, means all seeds, and directed suggests an intentional act. Put together, directed panspermia is the hypothesis that life on Earth was deliberately seeded by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. In the vast cosmic ocean, Earth is but a tiny blue dot, yet we know it teems with life. The question has always been, how did life originate here? While many theories exist, directed panspermia offers a unique perspective. It suggests that life didn't spring from the primordial soup of Earth, but instead arrived from the far reaches of space, transported intentionally by some advanced civilization. Imagine this, a civilization, light years away, advanced to the point of manipulating life itself. They could have engineered robust microorganisms, capable of surviving the harsh conditions of space. These microscopic life forms might have been loaded onto a spacecraft and sent hurtling across the cosmos, aimed at planets with conditions suitable for life, like Earth. Upon reaching their destination, these microorganisms could have seeded life, evolving over billions of years into the diverse species that populate our planet today. From the smallest bacteria to the largest whale, from the simplest plant to the most complex human, all could trace their lineage back to these alien seeds. Now, it's essential to clarify that this theory is not widely accepted in the scientific community. It's considered speculative, largely due to the lack of concrete evidence and the immense distances involved in interstellar travel. However, it's a theory that stretches the boundaries of our imagination, encouraging us to explore the profound mystery of life's origin. In essence, we could all be descendants of alien life. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But let's delve deeper. How could life possibly travel across the vast expanse of space? This question might seem daunting at first, but let's delve into the mechanics of panspermia to uncover the fascinating possibilities. At the heart of panspermia theory is the survival of microbes in the harsh conditions of outer space. These microscopic life forms are capable of entering a dormant state allowing them to withstand extremes of temperature, radiation, and pressure. Think of it as the ultimate survival mode, a hibernation for the ages. Now, picture a meteoroid hurtling through the cosmos. It's not just a rock, it's a vessel. Within its protective crust, these dormant microbes are shielded from the harshest conditions of space travel. They're like passengers on a cruise ship, albeit a cruise ship traversing the vast cosmic ocean. But how do these microbial passengers get on board? Well, they could be the remnants of a planet's biosphere, ejected into space by a cataclysmic event like a volcanic eruption or a meteorite impact. The meteoroid, now carrying these microscopic stowaways, embarks on a journey across the cosmos. And the journey isn't short, we're talking about millions, even billions of years. But remember, our microbial passengers are in survival mode and time is a mere concept to them. They can endure, and they do, so what happens when this interstellar cruise ship reaches a new planet? If the conditions are right, these microbes, once dormant, could awaken and begin to multiply. They could adapt, evolve, and over time, give rise to complex life forms. This is the essence of panspermia. It's not just about survival, but also about adaptation and evolution. It's about life's incredible ability to persist, to venture into the unknown, and to flourish in new environments. If life could survive such a journey, it's plausible to believe that we might not be the universe's only tenants. And just like that, we find ourselves contemplating the profound possibility of life beyond our pale blue dot. 
but what evidence do we have to support such a radical theory? In the quest to answer this question, we turn our gaze to the extremophiles, those tenacious life forms that thrive in the most inhospitable corners of our planet. From the scorching vents of undersea volcanoes to the icy desolation of Antarctica, their existence suggests that life can withstand a whole host of extreme conditions, potentially even the harsh environment of outer space. Now, we might ask, how could these extremophiles have ended up in space? To answer this, we look to the stars, or rather, the meteorites that have fallen from them. Some of these space rocks have been found to contain organic compounds, the building blocks of life. Isn't it intriguing to think that life on Earth could have originated from these cosmic seeds? And then there's the water on Mars. If you've been keeping up with space exploration news, you'll know that the existence of water on the red planet is no longer just the stuff of science fiction. With water being one of the essential ingredients for life as we know it, its presence on Mars opens up the tantalizing possibility that life could have existed or might still exist beyond our home planet. Now, does the existence of extremophiles, organic compounds in meteorites and water on Mars conclusively prove the theory of directed panspermia? Well, no, not exactly. But it does provide compelling pieces of a puzzle that point to the possibility of life originating from beyond our celestial neighborhood. Science is a continuously evolving field, and as we gather more pieces of the puzzle, the picture becomes clearer. New discoveries may just tip the scales in favor of directed panspermia, or they may lead us down an entirely different path. While none of this evidence is conclusive, it does make the theory of directed panspermia a fascinating possibility worth exploring. What would it mean for us if directed panspermia were true? This question is as profound as it is provocative. And the implications? Well, they're nothing short of revolutionary. If directed panspermia holds water, it fundamentally alters our understanding of life's origin. It suggests that life didn't spontaneously arise in the primordial soup of our planet alone, Instead, it could have been deliberately seeded across the cosmos by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. This shatters the traditional view of evolution, introducing a cosmic kind of selection where life is planted, cultivated and harvested across different planets. Imagine the implications for our place in the universe. We're no longer a unique, isolated speck of life in the vast cosmic ocean. We become part of a grand interstellar tapestry woven together by biological threads that span galaxies. We're not alone, we're part of a cosmic family. And this family might be bigger and more diverse than we can currently comprehend. Now let's think about the potential for other life forms. If life on Earth was seeded, it means that life elsewhere in the universe is not just possible, but highly probable. It's like a cosmic game of hide and seek. The universe is the playground, and we've just been handed a map the question is no longer, is there life out there, but where is life out there, and how similar or different is it to us? In this light, directed panspermia also redefines our search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We wouldn't be just looking for radio signals from distant stars anymore. We'd be seeking signs of biological engineering, evidence of cosmic gardeners who sow the seeds of life across the universe. So, while we're still far from confirming directed panspermia, entertaining its possibility can be a profound exercise. It challenges our perspectives, it broadens our thinking, it compels us to question and explore further. Directed panspermia, though unproven, expands our horizons and allows us to imagine a universe teeming with life. The universe is vast, full of mysteries and endless possibilities. As we draw to a close, Let's recap the fascinating journey we've embarked on today. We've delved into the theory of directed panspermia, a concept that suggests life on Earth could have been deliberately seeded by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. We've explored the mechanics of how this cosmic voyage of life could have taken place and examined some intriguing evidence that could potentially support this theory. Remember, while the theory is not proven, it's a captivating possibility that challenges our perception of life's origins. It's one of many theories, each with its own merits and mysteries. It's a testament to the boundless curiosity of the human mind, constantly seeking answers in a universe full of questions. As we continue to explore the cosmos, who knows what we might discover? Perhaps one day we'll find that we are indeed not alone.